<sighs> All right, it's uh, Sunday morning. I'm out here uh, working on the ram again. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, I had my uh, stuff come in from Thurn. So in the back here, we're going to be installing... I think it's called the the mid-rate coils and stock height mid mid-rate coils, the Fox shocks and the Thurin rear track bar and sway bar drop brackets. So I'm getting started here, and I'll show you what I got. I got the truck jacked up. Jack stands and center box. Got jack underneath the pumpkin of the rear end. So what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna take the shocks off since I'm replacing them. Those coils are what we're replacing with the thern ones. So we'll have to undo this these sway bar links. The factory track rear track bar. And if your truck's equipped with it, they got that shock that's in the middle. Some trucks have them, some don't. I know a lot of the power wagons did, and then mine does too. You might have to undo that too. Just do undo the end so that the rear end has enough downward travel to get the springs out. a better look of underneath so I'll we'll undo the sway bar and links the shocks on both sides since we're replacing them undo that shock in the middle and then the rear track bar and we should be able to drop this enough to get the springs out Do the get the top shock bolt. Take your your inner wheel liner out. Eight millimeters all the way around. Yeah, eight millimeter, eight millimeter. They look like this. That'll give you better access to that top top deal. And I always hate these because they're always so rusty and they spin. I got a pair of vice grips on there. Soaked it with the. Oh, PB Blaster, it's an 18 millimeter. And I finally broke it free, so. Keep, use the, use the vice grip to keep it from spinning, the middle spinning, and then undo the nut with a, a wrench. I'll bring you back with an update. Alrighty. So I was having a problem with, the vice grips kept slipping. And the teeth are about gone on these things. So uh, I said screw it, I'm replacing them anyways. So I got the walkie, walkie full hacksaw. Freaking just got it up in there and kept spraying a WD-40. There she goes. Just cut the top of it off. And then I should be able to pop that off. That way is a def definitely a lot quicker than the 18 millimeter wrench and the vice grips up top. Yeah. Even if you're, since you're replacing the shock anyways, it don't matter. The vice grip method and the wrench was taking too long and it kept slipping and it was marring up the shock anyways. So just cut it off the hex all sawzall. Okay, here's a better look of what I did. And this is the top of your shock mount, your stock shock mount. Had that bad boy on there like this. And you can see where I cut it with the hacksaw. Cut it off, you get this big chunk off. Close, cut as close as you can. And then with this last little piece, it'll be stuck up in there like this. 
I just took that pry bar to hammer and hammered it till it come loose. So there you go. There's a better look at it. See, normally, normally these the stock shocks they got. I know the Fox shocks they got a hex you can put in there to keep the the center from spinning. But you see these stock ones don't. And I had the vice grips on. It's just marring it up, and it kept coming or kept um, slipping. So I got tired of fooling with it and just cut it off. There you go. I just didn't do that bolt. What is that bolt? I don't know. We'll find out. Twenty. Definitely not twenty. Not twenty-two. Twenty. Twenty-one? I don't think I got a twenty-one. All right, I'll bring it back here in a minute. Twenty-one. Lower shock bolt to twenty-one. I did put a seven-eighth wrench on this side to hold the to hold the nut or hold this in because uh, I ain't got a twenty-one millimeter wrench. Seven-eighths held it just enough that it's actually a twenty-one. Walking impact made quick work of that. So now there's a the shock. Good jump. There's factory shock. Alrighty, on to the next thing. Alright, I got both shocks removed. I just cut them off like I showed you. I didn't do this this top shock on the rear end so it drops down it's got the keeper right here and then it's an 18 millimeter as well all right got sway bar and links disconnected 18 millimeters both sides got that metal shock so now all I gotta do now is take off this rear track bar 21 millimeter I think Twenty one. So the bolt there and then the bolt up there. Alright, I got the rear track bar out. And should just be able to lower both jacks and the spring should come out. I gotta be careful to lower the jack, not to lower stuff too far, because you'll rip them brake hoses out. So Give it a try here and see what happens. I've got it lowered enough where these are loose now. Now I just got it lowered enough to pull them out of there. All right, got the coils out. That's where your isolators are. I got them back there, so don't get to transfer that isolator to the new coil springs. All right, some time has passed. We got the new coils in. They are a tad bit taller than the originals. Got them in there. Got the isolators in the right spots. Now with these square bar links are right there, you want to take those off. And then Thurn provides these new ones. And they bolt or they mount to the outside, not the inside. The factory ones go on the inside. The, fact, uh, the third ones go on the outside. They're 19 millimeters. And they got grease zerks on both ends. And got that mounts on the outside of the sway bar. Outside of the frame mount. Uh, the hardest thing of this job so far was remounting that shock absorber on top that dang shock was so hard to push we tried ratchet strap and everything finally got it with a screwdriver put a screwdriver one end and line up the hole to put the bolt through but 
you can see where I was hitting it with the hammer. That shock is still good because it's real hard to compress. So to finish up the rear, really all I got to do now is install the, the new Thurn rear track bar deal. And I think there is some drilling required. I got to relook at the instructions. So I'll bring you back with another update later. All right, back. Put the Fox shocks on. Six millimeter Allen to hold the center. 19 millimeter uh, wrench. Tighten it up, just squeeze it just enough to compress those two. 21 millimeter down there, use the factory bolt. Again, these are the Fox shocks. Thurn, I'm gonna wipe it off. Looks like I got 30 hand prints all over it. side fog shock. So, it says in the instructions to install the full springs with this facing up. Which, anybody knows it's the right way to put them on. There's the rear older track bar. So got this one to put on it's telling me to put it back down on the ground on the wheels so we'll put the wheels back on and lower the truck back down for this rear track bar install you got 2500 use this factory factory bolt here and then with this slide this bracket into here and what do you want to do is make sure that these two are flush so it's not quite flush I'll have to do some maneuver in there Make sure them two are flush. You're going to drill your quarter inch pilot hole and then half inch hole here. And then the two holes at the bottom, there and there, half inch and drill them up. And you should be able to bolt everything together. I drove my quarter inch pilot hole right there. Or not, yeah, quarter inch. Quarter inch, walkie. Then I should be able to waller it out to a half inch. And you gotta waller those two at the bottom. Right there and there with a half inch drill bit. And then do this with the wheels on it on the ground. All right, half inch hole drilled there. Drill those two out, half inch as well. And then you should be able to mount this bracket back up. So, bolt goes in there. Factory bolt there on 2500s. If you got a power right wagon, you got to drill it yourself. And then the two at the bottom. Okay, this is it. A new track bar put in. It's bolted up on each side. It's hard to get this bracket lined up right. You're supposed to tighten the two bottom bolts first, back them off a full turn. Tighten this middle one up, and then then go back and tighten these up. You know, that's your factory one, and then everything should just bolt right up. But 
it doesn't line up as easy as you'd think. I think I spent almost two hours trying to do this part. But uh, the new coil springs are in. And let's see what it looks like. It shouldn't look any different height wise because it's. So I'll do the as of right now you can tell it does sit a little higher in the back. And I'll do the I'll do the front ones another day.